welcome to another episode of The Prairie Kitchen at Under a Tin Roof. If you're new here, I'm Kayla. I'm a digital content creator, recipe developer, and cookbook author of The Prairie Kitchen Cookbook and The Cottage Core Baking Book, which comes out this upcoming February 2024. The book itself focuses on cottage core themed baking recipes, savory and sweet. And really, I'm excited about this book because it has a lot of very whimsical details to it. I tried to add in some more food artistry. There are some fun acorn shaped cookies, a Bush de Noel cake, and then I also added in some patisserie style baked goods. So um, I'm just really excited for this book. I think it's going to be really fun. On this channel, I have been trying to bake things from historical or vintage cookbooks um, and bake them according to the directions instead of trying to modernize them. And sometimes this epically fails, other times it works out great. Personally, I have a deep passion for history and I love cooking historical recipes, but my job as a recipe developer is of course to create my own recipes. So I take a lot of inspiration for my own recipes from historical cooking. Today, uh, I'm definitely coming to you a little bit more casual than I normally dress, but that is because I have really been wanting to try making a themed Lambeth cake. I have been wanting to make this cake that I have been dreaming about for several months now. Pretty positive that I had this idea back in July. If you don't know what that is, I will share what a Lambeth cake is later in the episode. But to give you an idea, it is those iconic vintage style cakes with all of the very intricate piping details on them. I have made Lambeth style cakes before my other channels. There's actually one featured in my new book. This one I wanted to make as an over the garden wall themed cake. I thought that that could be really fun for fall and feel um, a little bit iconic and themey. And if you don't know what Over the Garden Wall is, it is this limited series cartoon by Patrick McHale. It aired on Cartoon Network in November of 2014. That was the year that I graduated high school, so it's, it has been an iconic staple in my cozy favorite show collection for a really long time. I personally think that this show is absolutely phenomenal. It's beautifully done. There are so many intricate connections in it. I love limited series. I think they're way better than a series that's super duper long. I just feel like the artwork in this show too is amazing. It's bucolic, a little bit gothic. It gives off all of those Victorian Halloween vibes, similar to what I talked about in last week's episode. There's so many iconic images and characters from this show. So I thought creating a decorated cake could be really cool and fun to do. And on top of that, I am like the world's worst cake decorator. My cake baking skills are just fine, I think, but the decorating side to it are always, um, they could use a little work. They never turn out how they look in my imagination. So I thought that this could be kind of fun to share my process of attempting to be a better cake decorator. And then I also thought I would be bold and try some new cake decorating skills that I've never done before. Without further ado, grab something warm and cozy to drink, settle in, and you can watch me make this dumpster fire over the garden wall cake, but I, I'm hoping it's gonna turn out better than that. So let's head over to the drawing board. To begin making this cake, I first had to decide which flavors I wanted to work with. I chose to stick with a tried and true chocolate cake recipe that I've used in the past just to play it safe as I knew that what I wanted to focus on was decorating the cake in the Lambeth style. This chocolate cake uses two and a half cups cake flour, three quarters of a cup of black cocoa powder, two cups sugar, one tablespoon baking powder, teaspoon kosher salt, a half cup of buttermilk, a half cup of sour cream, a half cup of vegetable oil, two large eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and a quarter cup of hot coffee. Mix all of that up together and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 35 minutes. Now, what is a Lambeth cake, you might be wondering? Well, let me share with you. The Lambeth style of cake decorating has been around far longer than Joseph Lambeth, 
whom the style is named after. In fact, the style of decorating called overpiping is said to have originated in Italy, then moved to France, then Germany, and eventually landing in the UK. It is now traditionally called English overpiping. One of the first books written about overpiping techniques was published in 1901 by S.P. Barella of Italy. Joseph Lambeth, a renowned American baker, made the style famous all over again in the early 20th century by traveling with his cakes to the International Food and Confectionery Exposition of London, Provinces, and Great Britain. He did this for 12 years. Then he moved to England to open the Lambeth Decorating School and published a book called The Lambeth Method of Cake Decorating and Practical Pastries, which came out in 1934. These cakes, which many of us consider vintage and instantly I think of illustrations of cakes from the late 19th century, had a major resurgence in the 1980s for wedding cakes, and now they have become a bit of a novelty for birthday cakes. Now enjoy while I draw at the skill level of a fourth grader. The cake that I have been imagining will be a black chocolate cake with sunset orange frosting in between the layers and a gradient of frosting in oranges, yellows, and reds. I want to make a stencil with the help of my mom of Greg and Wirt to go over the top of the cake and dust with black cocoa powder, then finish off with black buttercream frosting details. I think that this will create a cake that is playful yet still give off some spooky Halloween vibes. Let's head into the kitchen and get to work. I began by making the cakes first. Whisk together the flour, cocoa powder, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Then add in the milk, oil, sour cream, eggs, and vanilla. Whisk until well combined, then stir in the coffee. I decided that the batter was not chocolatey enough, so I added in one ounce of Baker's semi-sweet chocolate melted. I divided the batter between three eight inch baking pans that were well buttered and floured and baked them for 35 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. After the cakes were done, they needed to cool completely before being decorated, so I left them on the cooling rack overnight. The next day, I recruited my mom to help me create a stencil of Greg and Wart to put on top of the cake. We used an image that we found online and adjusted it to the size that we needed in Photoshop. Then, using a transparency film and a hot knife, she cut out the image. She wanted me to warn you that this hot knife is extremely hot and can burn you badly, so use it with caution. You can find the link in the description of this video.
We realized that we also created a fun little wooden art piece of Greg and Wirt in the end, so of course I put it in the studio kitchen to keep forever. With all of that out of the way, it was time to face my fears and frost this cake. I decided to try making Swiss buttercream as I assumed that maybe it would be softer and easier to work with than American buttercream. I started with four egg whites, one cup of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. This was set over a pan of simmering water and whisked until it reached 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Then the mixture is whipped on high speed until it is the consistency of shaving cream and has cooled significantly. With one and a half cups of room temperature butter or butter that is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, begin adding it to the egg whites one tablespoon at a time. My buttercream was looking curdled so I used the trick of warming the outside of the bowl with a hair dryer and it worked amazingly. It should be super soft and creamy. Then I got to frosting. We got this. I brushed coffee on the layers of the cake too for added moisture. Your eyes. Ah! This amount of buttercream was only enough frosting for the crumb coat, so I just went with it. That's a little better, I think. At this point, I started to panic that I was going to have the ugliest cake known to man. Even though my frosting was super soft, it began to chill quickly in my cold studio, making it difficult to spread. For the remaining frosting, I decided to make two batches of American buttercream and alter my recipe. I used one cup of butter, four cups of super sifted powdered sugar, and four tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. I beat the butter for a solid five minutes before adding the powdered sugar and cream, then beat those until they were incredibly light and fluffy and full of air another six to seven minutes. The result was dreamy, soft, and creamy, and it left me feeling more confident that this cake would not be a complete fail and end up looking like a Kayla-styled lump cake. To shade the cake, I used a marbling technique, which is used for sunset style cakes, where you just layer the colors with a palette knife and then smooth them out with a bench scraper. Then came the moment of truth using the stencil. I still can't believe how good this turned out. I was ecstatic. I finished off the cake with some piping techniques and black frosting, which I colored partially with food coloring and black cocoa powder.
think that that could have gone much better than it did. I am honestly in complete shock still that I managed to make that cake and bring the vision that I had come to life. And it went so well. I was so nervous when that Swiss buttercream first went on. I think I finally figured out the issues that I was having when I would make cakes in the past. And my family jokingly calls the decorated cakes that I make lump cakes because they usually have some form of lumpiness to them. <laughs> that typically happens with like a jutting out of cake from the back or something, or like the cake is too soft. Cake making is a science for sure. I'm not always the best cake scientist, but this time was a real winner. And I wish I had more of the cake to show you, but it was gobbled up by my three children and my husband and my parents. As far as things that I would change about this cake, I think the only thing is that the cake, the actual cake itself was super soft and moist, which was delicious, but it made it difficult to decorate, especially if the icing was too stiff. But then again, I really enjoyed the cake. So it was something where it was like, I wish that it would have had maybe a little bit more structure and density to it. So if that's something that you'd want to alter, with more flour, um, you certainly could do that. You just want a little bit of a thicker batter. As far as decorating it goes, I think it went really well once I figured out what I was doing wrong, which was just having the butter was not whipped long enough. Honestly, this is probably my most favorite cake that I've ever made. I'm really, really proud of it and how it turned out. It makes me want to try making more of them already. It's my mom. I hope that you had fun watching me make this super nostalgic, over the garden wall, Lambeth style cake. I certainly had a lot of fun making it. To wrap everything up, I post every Friday and usually I am cooking something historical or historically inspired or show one of my recipes in more detail. Um, and I just want this to feel like a cozy space and like we're hanging out together in my little cottagey kitchen. I also post videos almost daily to our Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can also find hundreds of free recipes on our blog. I have been writing our blog for almost 10 years now. It's at undertinroof.com and it has all of my recipes. The recipe from this episode will be featured over there and you can print it out or pin it or, or however you like to save recipes online. You can pre-order our new book, The Cottage Core Baking Book. It comes out February 6th, 2024. Well, I think that that is it for today, dear readers. And I hope that you get to bake or make or cook something in your own cozy cottage kitchen this weekend. We'll see you next Friday and I'm pretty excited for that episode. It's going to be another fun Halloween theme. <laughs> So I will see you right here next week. Okay, I love you guys, bye.